Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. Today is day four of Hidden Figures, and today's Hidden Figure is Anna Louise James, who was born in 1886 and died in 1977, and was the first female and first Black American woman pharmacist in Connecticut. She operated the James Pharmacy in Old Saybrook, Connecticut, for 50 years. Anna Louise James was born on January 19, 1886, in Hartford, Connecticut, to Willis Samuel James and Anna Houston, who were slaves. Her parents were enslaved on a plantation in Virginia, and at the age of 16, her father utilized the Underground Railroad in order to escape with his family to Connecticut. Willis James and Anna Houston legally married in 1874. Settling in Hartford, in 1886, they welcomed the eighth of their 11 children, Anna Louise. When she was eight years old, Anna's mother died, and she was subsequently raised by her father and older sister, Bertha, attending primary school in Hartford before the family moved to Old Saybrook, Connecticut. The James family was one of the few black families living in Old Saybrook, where Anna graduated from the local high school in 1905. Anna stated that there were pharmacists in my family as long as I can remember, including her brother Fritz, who operated a pharmacy in Old Lyme, Connecticut, and her brother-in-law, Peter Lane, who opened the first drugstore in Old Saybrook shortly after the family moved there. The husband of Anna's caretaker, Bertha, her older sister, Peter owned and operated the pharmacy business called Lane Pharmacy, while Bertha ran several businesses as a state licensed barber, chiropodist, and linen embroiderer. At the time, Fritz, James, and Peter Lane were the only two black pharmacists in Connecticut. Anna attended the Brooklyn College of Pharmacy as the only woman in her class, becoming the first Black American woman graduate in 1908. The following year, she became the first Black American woman to be licensed as a pharmacist in Connecticut, despite the fact that the Connecticut Pharmaceutical Association rejected her application for membership because she was a woman and suggested she join the Women's Auxiliary Club instead. After graduating, Anna worked a short time in Hartford before returning to Saybrook in 1911 to join her brother-in-law in his drugstore. When Peter returned to Hartford in 1918 to accept a position with the Sisson Drug Company, Anna Louise took over the pharmacy, making her both the first female and first Black American woman pharmacist in Connecticut. So she was the first woman overall, and she was also the first Black American woman as well. She moved in upstairs, became the sole owner in 1922, and renamed it James Pharmacy. James and her family made sweeping improvements in the historic building, which was originally built in the 1790s as a general store. Peter Lane added a popular soda fountain with granite counter and heart-shaped metal chairs and tables in 1896, and Anna Louise added a two-story wing in 1922, an arcaded front extension, and built-in display cases and glass door cabinets in 1925. In the early 1930s, Anna Louise also hired architect Francis Nelson to redesign the building, adding an entire ice cream parlor and moving the entrance. Described as a small woman with a soft voice, pulled back hair in a tight bun, and a stern face covered by rimless spectacles, Anna Louise insisted that everyone call her Miss James, even friends and family members, and for more than 50 years dispensed prescriptions to cure illness and soothed the minds and hearts of generations of Old Saybrook residents and visitors. A kind, trusted, and well-respected figure in the community, she was friendly and neighborly, scooping ice cream for children and serving as a listening ear or shoulder to cry on for the adult residents of Old Saybrook. Community members often stop by for advice and assistance with ailments of all kinds, despite the fact that the tiny shoreline town of barely a thousand people was majority white, and the James's and the Jameses, excuse me, that's always tough, and the Jameses were a black family of pharmacists. While the James family initially experienced racism and resistance from the police department and other residents of Old Saybrook, after establishing the pharmacy with Anna Louise at the head, she became a cornerstone of the community. From a profile of James, this is what it says, obviously, she thrived professionally and became a cherished local legend. She knew everyone and everyone knew Miss James. She dispensed medicine, scooped ice cream, and what is still the ultimate symbol of trust to the Shoreline Summer community. She held the keys to vacant cottages during the winter. Like, that's that trust. Take my keys. <laughs> 
Miss James had the highest possible reputation, recalled Harriet Naughton, who lived next door to the pharmacy. She was someone you could trust with your life, which you did, since she was a pharmacist. She was a civic personality, so to speak, and she had a role in town as Miss James, the pharmacist. Because of this, James was a central figure in Saybrook, and her pharmacy was considered a community gathering place. In 1920, she also became one of the first women to register to vote in Old Saybrook and was politically active as well as the oldest member of the First Church of Christ in Old Saybrook. For her 80th birthday in January 1966, friends and family held a birthday party at the store. 250 people showed up, including members of the high school band who played outside in falling snow for the guest of honor. In 1974, the Old Saybrook Veterans of Foreign Wars honored her as Citizen of the Year, noting her generosity, hospitality, and compassion, and stating that her spirit, knowledge of medicine, and the services she had provided for generations of residents made her friend and pharmacist to the community for nearly 60 years. In 1967, at the age of 81, she retired and closed the pharmacy, continuing to live upstairs until her death in 1977. When she died, condolences flooded her family members and friends, along with personal stories of her kindness, guidance, and caring attention to those in need. Her pharmacy went up for sale after her death, ultimately becoming privately owned and ran as an ice cream parlor, bed and breakfast, and Moroccan marketplace at various points in time. As of today, it is not in use and not for sale. In the 1990s, AT&T featured the James Pharmacy Building in one of its television commercials. The building also received recognition as part of a documentary on Old Saybrook resident, Katherine Hepburn, who was a regular at the pharmacy and was good friends with Miss James. In 1994, the James Pharmacy received a listing on the National Register of Historic Places, and it is a featured stop on the Connecticut Freedom Trail. Her papers reside in Cambridge, Massachusetts at Radcliffe College's Arthur and Elizabeth Schlesinger Library on the History of Women in America. Donated by Ann Petrie, they are used to help trace the social history of Black women in the United States. The collection includes diaries, newspaper clippings, a family history, letters, and a photograph of a young Miss James behind the marble counter of the soda fountain at the pharmacy. James's niece, Anne Lane Petrie, is a writer whose debut novel, The Street, was the first novel by a Black American woman to sell more than a million copies. Like, this family was just accomplished. <laughs> In addition to The Street, Petrie wrote five other bo books, excuse me, including Country Place, a novel inspired by her experiences growing up in Old Saybrook, and The Drugstore Cat, which she based on her memories of working at James Pharmacy. Anne Petrie is the daughter of Miss James's sister Bertha and brother-in-law, Peter Lane. She really was, in spite of her stern quality, a wonderful woman, Petrie said. She took care of everybody. She was willing to listen to people's problems. Everyone adored her. You could tell in how they greeted her. She was just all things to all people, said Barbara Maynard, a longtime Old Saybrook resident. She always gave you the feeling of, don't worry about it, honey. I can take care of it for you. She was kind of like a member of everybody's family. If you had a cut from a clamshell, if you were bitten by a crab, if you had poison ivy, you went to Miss James, Maynard says. She would not only treat it, but sell you the medication you wanted. Everyone came to Miss James looking for help. And that's Anna Louise James, Miss James, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I was I, I was really surprised. Like I heard of this woman and then as I started doing her research, I found out that her niece is Anne Petrie, um, who I may have done hidden figures on before, I'm not sure, um, who was the first black American woman to be a best selling novelist you know, in the United States and worldwide. So really, really accomplished family. Uh, of course, there will be more links and information in the description box. Rocking right along. Can't believe we've already done four hidden figures. February always just flies by, but hopefully again, you guys enjoyed this one. Food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Happy, 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 happy Black History Month. Peace.